I thought this was going to be about steampunk fruit. This is just weird. Oh, hello. So, you finally caught up with me. It's been a while. Well, get comfy, for I have a tale to tell you. You see, one evening, long ago, after a long day of work at the salt mines, finally made it out of the labyrinth, but then I had to contend completely with Completely lost the use of my left hand, and I had to wield the broadsword. Almost. Broad almost hanged for treason. Just to make my way through the acid swamps, and here I am, in one piece. Well, I'm still not sure how I ended up with a temporarily reversed duplicate of myself. It's tragic, really. He lives backwards, remembering the future, but not the past. Poor fellow can't understand a word I say. Well, enough chit-chat. Oranges really are a delightful fruit. Sweet, tart, juicy, and chock full of vitamin C. But after you've cut open their skin and sucked out their juicy insides, what do you do with the rind? I don't want to just throw it away or onto the compost heap. That would be the easy way out. Maybe I will just do that. Oh wait. I know. I've got all those sugar canes just taking up room. Being holiday season, it would be nice to have use of the wrapping room again. I've got it. Tonight, we're making candied orange peel. You'll need plenty of sugar, half a dozen or so oranges, and water. As far as equipment goes, you'll need a paring knife, a cutting knife, a measuring cup, a cutting board, and a pot. An instant read or candy thermometer can also be helpful, but they're not essential. Oh, you might also need a spoon, a pair of tongs, a baking sheet or a large plate, and some wax paper. Oh, and also a strainer and some airtight containers like jars. Start by using your paring knife to cut through the peel of the orange, being careful not to cut into the flesh, at least not too far, in meridian lines all the way around. Then turn the orange a quarter turn and do it again. What you're doing, basically, is cutting the peel into four segments before you peel it. If you want to, you can also do this around the equator of the orange. It depends on how long you want the strips to be. Scoring the orange in this way makes it much easier to peel. You can start at either end or in the middle. Just gently push your fingers between the rind and the flesh. You can also insert a spoon, or if you have an orange peeler, so much the better. You will probably end up with a thick layer of pith on the peel. If you object to this, don't worry about removing it right now. It will be much easier later. Most recipes call for the skin of six oranges. I used eight, but I wouldn't use any more than that for a batch this size. As you remove the peels, go ahead and throw them into a medium to large saucepan. Don't worry if some of your peels are torn or gnarly looking. They'll still make good candy. Here's a couple of tips if you're having trouble peeling the oranges cleanly, though. You can try scoring a square around each end of the orange. Or, always using better knife safety than I do, you can simply slice each end off. Once you have all your peels in the pot, add enough water to cover them. Put them on the stove on high and bring them to a boil. As soon as they come to a strong boil, turn off the stove and drain the water. You should repeat this process, filling the pot with water again, bringing it to a boil, and draining it off. You can do this just once or twice, but three times leaches out most of the bitterness and leaves a good strong orange flavor. After you've blanched the peels as many times as you like, you have the option of scraping off the pith. Let the peels cool down a bit, and then use a spoon to just scrape it right off. You'll end up with a bunch of pith that you can just throw on the compost heap or whatever. Then you'll want to slice your orange peels. You can do this either way, but as you'll see here, it's slightly easier to slice them with the pith side facing up than with the orange side facing up. The width of a standard french fry is a good size for these, but you can make them smaller or larger as you like. Now, a word on pith before we move on. Some people prefer to leave the pith on the orange peels. This makes the finished product softer, thicker, chewier, and keeps them from becoming crunchy as they dry. It's really up to you. 
If you don't want the pith on there, go ahead and scrape it off, but after you've blanched the peels, it doesn't really add any bitterness. I made this batch about half one way and half the other and found that I liked it both ways. If you have any small pieces of peel, don't even bother cutting them up, just throw them in with the strips. Once you've sliced up your peels, add four and a half cups of sugar to a pot, then one and a half cups of water, if you have a candy thermometer, now would be the appropriate time to insert it, but it's not necessary. Once again, turn the burner to high and whisk the mixture to help the sugar dissolve. It will take a little while to heat up, and it will be thick and cloudy for a while. You don't really need to keep whisking it the whole time. I just like whisking, I guess. What you're going to be looking for is a temperature of between 230 and 235 on the candy thermometer. But you don't really need to get that technical either. If you just watch for the mixture to clarify, you should be good to go. Or, you can place a drop of the mixture in cold water and it should form a soft, pliable ball. But be very careful the entire time you're working with this stuff. It's called culinary napalm for a reason. Even a thin syrup like this will stick to you and burn you if you're not careful. So, on that cheerful note, go ahead and remove the candy thermometer and add all of the orange peels, or at least as much as will reasonably fit into the pot. Turn the burner down to low to keep these at a simmer. You may need to press them gently into the syrup, but after that, no stirring. Nothing for 45 minutes. The reason we don't stir while they're simmering is that this can introduce or create sugar crystals in the syrup, which makes things a crystalline mess. If you've ever had melted chocolate seize on you, it's kind of like that, although not quite so dramatic. If you really need to, you can give the pot a little jiggle. After 45 minutes, the peel should be slightly translucent. Go ahead and turn off the stove and drain off the syrup. You can throw the syrup out, but I recommend saving it in a jar or something. You can put it in tea, pour it over pancakes, or use it in place of sugar when you're baking. A pair of tongs will make this easier, cleaner, and safer. Pour some sugar into a bowl and toss in some of the orange peels. You can jiggle them back and forth, or you can use a fork or something to toss the sugar over the peels. Just be sure to get each strip evenly and completely coated. Spread out some wax paper on a baking sheet, a large plate, or just on the counter, and lay out the orange peels in a single layer. They'll need to dry out for about four hours, so cover them loosely with a towel or something to keep them safe from cats and dust. After they've dried out for a few hours, they should still be fairly chewy. Store them in an airtight container to keep them fresh. You can also make these with other types of citrus peels, such as lemon, lime, or grapefruit. Well that took a while, but I'm quite pleased with the results. They make your mouth all tingly, like when you eat potato chips after kiwis. Maybe that's just me. Tune in next time for information on something else.